red. Uh, well, have a seat, audience. Thank you for being here. I'm wearing my red pin to because we're uh, honoring the 10th annual National Wear Red Day. You know, it's to bring awareness to women and our heart disease that, you know, it's the number one thing that kills us. So wear your red for acknowledgement of that. And as women, it's very important for each and every one of us to empower each other and take charge of our health. So, um, and then my, my, my Super Bowl jacket actually is, um, I, now I look, I know that the 49ers and I know that the Ravens are playing in New Orleans <laughs> on Sunday, uh -huh. but I also know that next year the Super Bowl is in New Jersey, so my, my, um, <laughs> um, I've already shared this with you. I'm on the, the Super Bowl committee um, and all the festivities leading up to it next year in New Jersey. So this is the jacket from that. But um, do we have 49ers fans here today? Yeah. Do we have Baltimore Ravens fans here today? Yeah. Do we have any Beyonce fans here today? Yeah. That's what I say. I mean. I can't wait for Beyonce's intermission performance. It's gonna be really good. You know, she's been posting pictures on her website behind the scenes at her rehearsal. First of all, Suzanne, why couldn't you wear that? Oh, no. You, you are, you are. <laughs> I mean, look at your outfit. And look at Beyonce's outfit. This Boy, is beautiful. I would have loved to have worn some of those leather shorts though. That's a, it's a good intermission outfit. Anyway, um, Beyonce, you know, oh God, that's a great outfit. She's posted, she's already posted some of her, her uh, rehearsal on her website and we have a little clip of it for you. It looks like it's gonna be really, ex well, that's about as much as, do we have any B-roll of it? Yep. Yeah, let's roll that. First of all, her body looks great. And uh, all I want her to do is get down and break it down. And you know, like I've said a million times, I prefer if she lip synced and not try to prove to you guys that she can sing. You know she can sing. There's, she, I know she's under a tremendous amount of pressure right now. Should she lip sync or not lip sync or lip sync 50% of the time or not? As far as I'm concerned, she can lip sync the whole performance. Because, because the, thing, the thing about Beyonce, and Lady Gaga and Madonna and some of these girls is that they are showgirls. So they don't just sing, they perform, they dance, they get down, they do costume changes. I mean, you know, and Beyonce is the con. I know it's a lot of pressure, but just sing, at, well, lip sync and dance and do it. And now they say that when Madonna performed at the Super Bowl, I think it was last year, mm -hmm. that um, that was the highest rated Super Bowl ever, ever, ever. But I think that Beyonce can top that this year because, yeah. I think that um, Madonna is loved, but she's loved by a certain segment of the population, and I think that's based on age. Beyonce is loved by every age. Just my thought. So I'm looking forward to seeing her, and I, you know, the, the speculation about whether she's gonna be performing with Destiny's Child still goes on. You know, I think that she probably will, but she wanted to keep it under wraps, and then Michelle. <laughs> had to uh, step out and deny that there was a reunion. She claimed that she couldn't be part of it because she was busy on Broadway with the musical Fela. Only we here did a little research to see if we could get some tickets. And on the recording, it said that uh, Michelle was taking her little um, Fela break right in time for the Super Bowl. They didn't mention the Super Bowl, but exactly. Michelle, I know Beyonce dressed you down when she heard about that, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, I love you, but they could have still performed. Kelly and Michelle could, or Kelly and Beyonce could have performed without you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. I like Michelle, but I, ever since she fell on BET 106 and Park. And she doesn't look like the rest, and she doesn't act like the rest, and she wasn't an original member, and just, oh, Michelle, you're always messing up. <laughs> anyway, um, for many people watching the Super Bowl, uh, just, is just all about, you know, the halftime performance as well as uh, the commercials. Um, and those commercials, those commercials have never come cheap, but this year the average 30 second commercial for the Super Bowl is $3.8 million. That's up about $200,000 from last year. So even though the economy is bad and, and a lot of people don't have jobs, 
uh, the Super Bowl commercials are up. They cost more money. And some of the celebrities that we can look forward to seeing during the uh, halftime commercials include Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> Forgot no. Yes, he does. <laughs> I love him. And then Amy Poehler. She's in a Best Buy ad. That's funny. And then uh, the rapper Psy is still capitalizing on his gingham style. He's in a pistachios commercial doing the gingham. But the, cur co the commercial that seems to be causing a whole lot of controversy already is this one for Volkswagen. It's, uh, it stars a Midwestern white guy who fakes a Jamaican accent. And a lot of people are stepping up and calling it racist. We did do a Wendy poll, so I will give you the results. I want to know your opinion. Um, let's take a look at it, a bit of the commercial, and then we can talk. Go ahead. I hate Mondays. Yeah, they're the worst. No worries, man. Everything will be all right. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, don't fret me, brother. Sticky bun comes soon. Yeah. Wicked coffee, Mr. Jim. Julia, turn the frown the other way around. Hey, Dave, you're from Minnesota, right? Yes, I. The land of 10,000 lakes. The Gopher State. Sometimes I think that we can be oversensitive about everything, and then other times we have an absolute right. I'll be the first to pipe up, and then I want to give you the results. I wasn't offended by that, although I'm not Jamaican. I'm Jersey black. I'm just plain black. <laughs> but uh, like, I'm not offended by it. It was funny. I wish that, that um, you know, when people realize that something is, might be a little bit racially insensitive, they would just back away from it, but Volkswagen wanted to make that commercial anyway. The Jamaican singer, friend of the show, Sean Paul, says that he's not offended by the commercial. By a round of applause... Wait, first of all, where are my Jamaican people in the audience? Okay, there's all two of you. <laughs> Great. Um, can you clap if you're offended? No, not. not one of them. By a round of applause for everybody else. Who's offended by that in the audience? Don't be afraid to clap. Nobody. What is wrong with people? <laughs> Can I tell you something? Nobody was offended at wendyshow.com either. Now, I don't know. I, 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 people weren't offended now. I would challenge that if that was somebody doing an Asian accent, that maybe Asian people would be offended. If somebody was doing a black accent, would black people be offended? I'm not sure. I kind of don't like it when you do that to us. But... Anyway, we'll have to see the outcome, but nobody's offended. You know what? Maybe Volkswagen just put that out there to try to make us watch the commercial more and buy Volkswagens. Volkswagen, we already loved you. You didn't have to do that. Anyway, um, so th those are the halftime commercials, and, and have, happy Super Bowl watching, everybody. This is Adrian Maloof. Adrian, you know, <sighs> Adrian Maloof in Beverly Hills is speaking out about her feud with Brandi Glanville. Okay, she's talking to Life & Style magazine. Um, she told Life & Style that Adrian betrayed her. Remember, we talked about this on Hot Topic, because Adrian revealed in an episode that they attempted to edit out, only we went around the back and found out what was said. Brandy revealed that Adrian used the surrogate to have her twin six-year-old sons. I said that wasn't a big deal. What was the big deal about that? Adrian told Life & Style that she wanted to wait a few more years and then tell her sons herself. Yeah. Well, that would have been nice. However, you're on reality TV and, and Brandy is a loose cannon. <laughs> you know, and what's shocking is that she said that Brandy, Brandy destroyed her marriage to Paul by exposing their secret. Oh. Which anybody knows that one woman does not destroy a marriage. You know, there were apparently already cracks. I mean, Adrian, we read and talked about you allegedly accusing Paul of being abusive, not just to you, but to your kids. And this revelation is something that Adrian sent uh, um, a court order, a cease and desist, to Brandy's house to stop talking about it once it was already out. But once it was already out, it was too late to stop talking about it. We, don't, we even already talked about it here on Hot Topics. Brandy decided not to assign the cease and desist. But, you know, Brandy, I love Brandy, but Brandy is, you know, a little damaged herself. Because Brandy, remember, walked in on her husband about to 
take the whipped cream, remember? Take the caking icing. We talked about it yesterday. Off of, off of uh, his now wife, uh, Leanne Rhymes. So, you know, Leanne stole Eddie, and so, so uh, Brandy is, you know, still hurting over that. Plus, Brian, uh, Brandy is a reality star, and that's what they do. That's what you sign up for. Adrian, if anything, I'm still looking at you and wondering, why would you even sign up for this show? You're a Maloof. <laughs> you own everything. You already had celebrity fame. You already had your money. And so, Brandy didn't destroy your marriage. That's between you and Paul y'all. But I'll tell you what, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Reunion Show is coming on sometime soon. We'll keep you posted. Some, Uh-huh. I can't wait. <laughs> Did you read yesterday in the newspaper about Dan Marino, uh, the football uh, Hall of Famer, CBS sports ca sportscaster? He's going to be down there piping up at the Super Bowl. Well, he's 51 years old. I thought he was older than that, but 51. <laughs> and he's known for being squeaky clean. He's married, he has children, one of his kids has autism. He's a big uh, supporter of all things that uh, you know help in the uh, finding a cure for autism. But he was caught in a huge cheating scandal and they splashed it on in not just any old page, on the front cover of the New York Post yesterday. <laughs> Reportedly, he fathered a secret love child <laughs> with a CBS production assistant. <laughs> in 2005. The woman reportedly was about 35 years old at the time. Dan reportedly also gave the woman millions of dollars to, you know, care for, care for his daughter and, and, and keep that over there. And apparently Dan's wife must have forgiven him and known about this all along because, um, you know, the wording in the article, it, you know, it indicates that this must have been something that Mr. and Mrs. Marino had kind of worked out behind the scenes, and they just celebrated the 28th wedding anniversary earlier in the week, this week. Um, and they have their six kids. By the way, the, ju the jump off, the baby's mother, she, <laughs> she, she ended up going off and marrying somebody also. So I guess that's what you call having children out of wedlock or out of out of your marital relationship in 2013. I guess that's what happens. You know, you pay off. Mrs. Marino's fine. The, the woman is married. The daughter is healthy. She looks just like her father, by the way. And Dan is good. He's a good-looking man. I remember um, I was in the same room with him once. Um, I had gone to a big autism fundraiser. And he, he's tall. His stomach is flat. He's got a good Florida tan. I don't know whether that's full hair. Huh? Oh, I don't know whether that's, that's real hair or a wig, but it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. He was just good looking, stunning blue eyes, and every woman in the room's eyes, including mine, were all watching him like, wow. And then he got up there and he spoke on stage. He spoke out, you know, about, you know, his experiences with autism. And, and, and then it's like, oh my gosh, and he's got a heart. And everybody's like, until the door opened over here and in walks Bill Clinton. And everybody's like, forget you, Dan. We're watching him. <laughs> so, do you watch Shaws of Sunset? I like that show. I like that show. Those are some beautiful brown people. I can't take my eyes off of them. Okay, so it's on Bravo, and um, we've gotten our eyes full of one of the show's stars, who happens to be my favorite on the show, Mercedes MJ. Uh-huh. Well, MJ... MJ is my kind of girl, because MJ is perfectly happy with exactly who she is. We've already seen her in swimwear. The magazines have published the pictures and they're always with, you know, captions like, does she know what she looks like? Or, you know, why is she posing like that? Or, you know, something disparaging. But now she's posing in the new issue of In Touch Weekly magazine and this is what she chose. Uh-huh. That's, that's, a, I, I like it. I like it. I mean, you don't have to clap if you don't mean it. I know some of you probably said, ew. <laughs> and, and why? But why? Because she says in the article she's not starving to be thin. You know, she is really comfortable with herself. I've seen her wear, have you ever seen her um, on the show when she wears the bikinis at the pool and then she starts drinking? Because you know, it's a, look, it's one thing to be sober in a bathing suit because you know, you got your wits about you so you're able to stand up and you know, hold your back out. But the second you start drinking, you let your gut go, your posture goes, you got that bikini and everything's hanging out a mess. MJ, I love you for your confidence. You keep that up. That's good, Brown. 
<laughs> okay, you guys. I've got one more commercial to tell you about during the Super Bowl. It's uh, this, this company called SodaStream. You've heard of them? Yeah. They are airing their very first Super Bowl commercial. The Soda Stream transforms ordinary tap water into fizzy, healthier, great tasting soda in less than 30 seconds. And I'm telling you, when I say healthy, I mean this is, and it's so easy to do. There are over 60 soda mixed flavors, including ones that taste like the Sprite, ones that taste like the Coke or the Diet Coke, the whole bit. And uh, they help you cut down on all those bottles and cans that you have laying around. So that's running during the Super Bowl. But guess what, audience? You're all going home with your very own. Wendy. Hollywood's hottest leading ladies are coming to the couch. <laughs> Academy Award nominated movie star Selma Hayek. Plus, she's been called one of the sexiest women of all time and she's on our couch. International pop superstar Kylie Minogue makes her Wendy debut. She stars on the hit show on TV Land. It's called The Exes. And now she's also a New York Times bestselling author with her book, Guts, which just came out on paperback. Please welcome back to our show the hilarious Kristen Johnston. <laughs> audience thank you I've, I mean in the world I love yeah. thank you. are you a football girl do you, do absolutely you? not yeah I don't care sorry I mean I know I was like they were like it's the football show yeah I'm like I they get someone else yeah because <laughs> I am not the girl but I love the honesty do yeah. you know who's playing in the Super Bowl I have no clue are you do, do you have any plans on Sunday? Are you going to anybody's party? Something not not to do with football. <laughs> Are you going to watch the Puppy Bowl on Animal Planet? No, I actually I don't watch the SAG Awards though. Like you know what I mean? But this I'm, is your that's your business. I know. I'm saying I don't watch any of it. I like watching. You know, I'll watch my I'll watch my uh, America's Next Top Model. Oh my gosh, she's like one of us. What I else know. do you watch? Um, Housewives. <laughs> No, actually, can I tell you the honest truth about that show? Which I love it. You know, great, good for them. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I don't like that show. Okay. And it's weird because I'm the only human being on Alive. Yes. And Andy Cohen's one of my really good friends. Yeah, I know. And so I usually don't. But, uh, but he made me watch uh, like six episodes of Beverly Hills. Yes. For last, last episode. Right. Last year. And now I watch that show because yeah. I'm just like, I have to watch the train wreck. So I, I but I don't, I mean, I don't like it. It's okay. I don't think all women are, need to be drunk <laughs> and fighting. <laughs> Something that, that uh, me and Kristen have in common is that we both... Besides everything. Yeah. <laughs> Besides being tall and, <laughs> and, and outspoken. We both post for PETA. You first. You did your PETA. Yes. <laughs> now, wait, Glenn, can I tell you... I saw you, I was driving in a car the other day, and I saw your huge, they didn't do a billboard for me, P.S., by the way. <laughs> oh. I, well, I did taxi tops, but. Taxi her. tops are good. Taxi tops are good. All right, who's hotter? <laughs> you, because you're balancing on a horse. I'm only balancing on a mirror. This is true, I win. Look at how, was that a real horse? You're, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm yelling. I'm saying, don't do horses. They couldn't have a real horse. I don't know. Damn horse! <laughs> I mean, who knows? Yeah. So anyway, so what's shaking with you? I hear that. Oh, your friends call you KJO. You have a street yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. All, I'm, I'm right. A lot of people on Twitter call me KJO, and you know, uh, Facebook, whatever. Yeah, people call me KJO because it was K. It, it sort of originated from so, Annie Cohen, I think, and. Maybe my Jennifer friend John Lopez. Hickey. Well, yeah, it was around the time she had that J-Lo album. 
So is Kjo. Yeah. And that's your Twitter handle. Do you fight on Twitter? No, I don't fight, but if you attack me, I will A, retweet you, <laughs> and I will address your comment. Oh, so you do fight. No, I just do it, I, I'll get, like if somebody's like, Kristen Johnson's a man, and I'll be like, um, that wasn't lovely of you. You know what I mean? And usually they're like, oh my God, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah. I love you. Cowards always back down yeah, as yeah, soon yeah. as you acknowledge exactly, them. Exactly. So, you know, you and I are both very tall, and I've said this so many times on the show, because, you know, we're in the same age wheel, Yeah. and I say, you know, if I was single at this particular point, I would also date short guys. I would hope that. I, I would hope that. I've, I've always loved short guys. Oh, you have? Yeah, I mean, I don't care as long as they have a big, you know, they have, they have to have, um... <laughs> at the exact wrong moment in yeah, that sentence. Yes. No, but they have to have confidence. Yes. Uh, that's what I meant, everybody. <laughs> a big doesn't hurt. Yes. <laughs> big confidence. No, but you know, if they have confidence, I love, I used to date a lot of short guys. Yeah. yeah. I had, it took me years to grow into it, but now if I was a single woman, I would if definitely If it bothers win. them, I don't like it. Yeah. You know, if they're like, what used to always uh, concern me about dating a short guy is that if I ever fell down, he wouldn't be able to pick me up and yeah. throw me over his shoulder. But neither could me. a tall guy. You know? <laughs> I could. <laughs> All right, so your book is now in paperback guts. I know, I remember yeah. when this book first came out, oh, thank you. you came here to promote it. Thank you. And this, thank you. This series so is it. such, um, you know, explain to people what this book is about so we can get new pe new people interested in buying it. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a memoir and I actually wrote it myself, mm -hmm. which is already like, you know, yeah. whoa, yeah, most who does that? Um, but it's about my, uh, what happened to me, uh, I, my stomach burst, uh, my guts burst, which is why it's called guts, in London, uh, due to prolific Vicodin over usage. And uh, so ooh. she comes from a place of addiction and drug problems, and yes. now you're clean and sober. Six uh, years. There, there is a letter, and I, I read the letter from a young man there's a, That's there's, word for word. There's a young man whose life she saved by reading wow. your book. Yeah. How does that make you feel? He's young, like in high school. He wanted yeah. to end his life. He didn't think. He doesn't yeah. Think and he said, working. "I don't think I'm worth anything." And then I read your book, and I think maybe I am worth something. He's now. addicted to the pills. I'm, I think he was a meth addict. A meth addict. Uh, that happens to me once a day, or if not more. And what it does is instead of like, well, ha, look at me and my book, you know, instead of yeah. that, I'm just like so humbled. Like, thank you so much yes. for, for, for letting me in and yeah. trusting me. And I don't know, it's beautiful That's what it's done for thing. people. What would you... But it's also funny, you what know? Would you, what, what would I don't you? like, like, sad, like, no, you know, make me... I want to laugh. No, after a while, when, when, when you're sober for long enough, you can definitely make a lot of jokes about the days you used to get bombed. Oh, uh -huh. I, I, I did in rehab. What I would, don't know about you. What but. would you tell L. Lindsay Lowen? Because I'm done talking to her. <laughs> uh, like, I'm done. What would I tell her? That's, you know, I've been asked that before. I would tell her to read my book. Here up next, we're going to see who can throw the most footballs at some very large targets. You what don't want to miss it. <laughs> we're back, and we're about to play a very funny game. Kristen Johnston is still here, and... Thank you for saying my name correctly. Kristen Johnson, what are we supposed to say? Kirsty Johnson? Kristen Johnson? They're stupid. Kirsty Alley? Stop. <laughs> it's Kristen Johnston, and she stars on The X's. Okay. So now look. It does, our third season's coming back in June. Excellent. Okay. And she's been renewed. Yes, so look, uh, since this is our big Super Bowl show, we and we both have big mouths, we thought we'd play a game of Big Mouth Bowl. And here's how it works. <laughs> Seconds on the clock, and when I say go, 
We're going to both throw as many of these footballs into each of our this huge mouths as possible. And the winner's going to get a one-of-a-kind Wendy Show Super Bowl ring, which is as silly as the big mouth. Oh, my gosh, look at the ring. I can't I, I, I want to take, take the big mouth. Take it. Oh. You can take it. All right, wait, so wait, where do we... St just stand right here. Are there rules? No, oh. no, just don't throw in my mouth, and I'm not going to throw oh, in yours. Do, we get do I go here? 45 seconds on the clock. Okay, oh. And go. <laughs> I know, I cheated a little bit, but then Where's I... the ring? Oh, my gosh. Look at this stupid big ring. No, you have to put it on and wear it around well, town. You know me, John. There you go. <laughs> no worries. Kristen Johnson, thanks for being here. Her book, Guts, is in stores now. Up next, everybody, keep it here for Chef Michael Simon from The Chew with some delicious Super Bowl halftime snacks. Bye. Bye. Hottest leading ladies are coming to the couch. How you doing? <laughs> Tuesday on Wendy. Kerry Washington comes clean on what it's really like to do those steamy love scenes and scandal. The um, sex scenes in the affair is very steamy. Very steamy. Who knew? <laughs> We've got the leading ladies you love to watch. Monday on Wendy. Hollywood's hottest leading ladies are coming to the couch. <laughs> Academy Award-nominated movie star, Selma Hayek. Plus, she's been called one of the sexiest women of all time, and she's on our couch. International pop superstar Kylie Minogue makes her Wendy debut. Yeah. I make it no secret my favorite part of Super Bowl the snacking and here to show us some mouth watering munchies for Sunday's big game is the star of ABC's The Chew Michael Simon Thank you. very excited to be here Michael is a fan of the Cleveland Browns is that where you're from yes it's not always easy but I am I am if nothing else I'm loyal <laughs> well, that, that's important we okay. don't win a lot but I still cheer Wendy so now what are we making today it smells well, delicious it, it is and I think the, the greatest thing about Super Bowl parties is having stuff, as many different things as you can that people could grab and keep walking yes. and be social. Yeah. So the first thing that we're gonna make is we're gonna make these little meatball sliders. And it's my mom's meatball recipe. It's super easy. I mean, you could use ground veal, ground pork, ground beef, whatever your favorite ground meat is, but you need about 20% fat in there or your meatballs are not gonna be delicious. Like, don't okay. go buying that lean meat yeah. and then go, this doesn't taste good. Yeah. It's cause the fat is where the happiness is. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> yeah. so now, what type of meat are we using today? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a little bit of ground pork in these. A little bit? A little bit. Just a little bit. And then we just put in what, some of my favorite seasonings. I'm Greek and Sicilian, so I tend to lean that way when it comes yes. to flavors. Now, you said a little bit of pork. Now, is there beef in there, too, in turkey? Or what? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just going just straight. Pork. Yeah, okay. but, you, but you could go equal parts. No, I eat pork, yeah, please. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> So I have a little coriander, a little bit of cinnamon, yes. some cinnamon. shallot. Now, see, that's a Greek thing. The Greeks always put, very often put cinnamon in their savory dishes. Oh. And you'll see it gives it a whole different place of happiness. Okay. Some garlic, some salt. Now, this is the other thing. Don't be shy. When you're seasoning your food at home, people always think, oh, God, if you're making food from scratch, don't be shy with the salt. That's what makes Thank things you. delicious. Say. Add the salt. Thank you. Now, what is that? This is the zest of lemon. Okay, zest lemon. The, and the zest lemon is going to make this very bright. All right. Because you have that fat, you have that richness. Yes. So you need something to make it bright. Now, what is this right here? What, what do I see? Now, is this, that, is, this is my mom's trick. She takes day old bread, and she soaks it in a little bit of milk, and then she wrings out uh -huh. the milk. All right? And then that keeps it really moist. 
and then a little bit of uh, ricotta cheese, which is also going to help keep it very moist. We're going to have this recipe at wendyshow.com. Yeah. I don't know about you, but as soon as I get home, I'm copying. So let's... you just take this, you mix it all up, you get it nice and smooth, and then you make the little meatballs like this. Just form them in little mm -hmm. balls. You can do this a day ahead. Mm -hmm. And then you just drop them in your fat. A little bit of oil in that pan. Olive oil would be What nice. I like get is that nice the, these crispy. are even smaller than sliders, and we're going to put them on buns. When can we do the taste So, in? look, we put them on a little bit of bun. I put a basil leaf in there, um, a little bit of your favorite marinara sauce underneath. This is definitely like adult eating at Super Bowl. Uh -huh. yeah. How's this? Delicious. Mm -hmm. Are we happy? All right, now, here's a fun one. Like, especially this weekend, the Ravens are in the Super Bowl, which kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Because they used to be the Cleveland Browns. Why do they used to be the Did Cleveland they? Browns? Did they? Yes. But I'll live. So, but I'm still going to make this dish. This is crab tater tots. So oh. you take beautiful lump crab meat. You make, um, you know, they call this a patty shoe, but it's essentially just a little bit of butter and flour that's going to help bind us together. Now watch how easy this is. You take a whole egg. This is adult food. This is adult. No potato this, tater yeah, tots. But this is like adult kids' food, I think, which is really cool. Mashed potatoes, just, and they could be day-old mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes you made in advance. You mix them with the egg, and you get this all mixed up really good. Now, I'm not going to be shy, because I know you're not either. I get in with mm -mm. my hands there. Look, this is not the time to be using egg whites either. Oh, hell no. What can I do to help? No. Other you than... put egg beaters in here, I will hunt you down. Yeah. All right. So, I have to say. So this starts to come together, and then once you put the crab meat in, this is when you want to be a little more delicate, because you have these big lumps of crab, you don't want to overwork it. Right. So you, you take a spoon, or with your hands, you gently, gently fold it and in. And you're going to shape them like these right here. here. This is called a quenelle, and I'll just show you real quick. Oh, uh -huh. So we fold a quenelle. A quenelle. A quenelle. You fancy. know, the French, one thing I learned about going to culinary school and working for all these great French chefs, they just want to confuse you with fancy words. So. So that, you know, how, now let me ask you, how hot does the oil have to be? And about, should I start dropping these yeah, in? Well, we're going to roll them right in here first. What, what is that? This is panko breadcrumbs. Oh, we have those at home. And then we just take our little I just started using panko breadcrumbs on a regular basis about a year ago. I've learned it from some of the great chefs who've come here to our show. And the sriracha sauce, too. I wasn't using that. I was oh. just a straight hot sauce girl. So these are two great things. Panko breadcrumbs are like pre-buttered breadcrumbs almost. They make everything buttery and super crispy. You drop them in oil 350 degrees. And it comes out of here. When they get golden brown, they look just like this. Your favorite hot sauce, boom. Delicious easy finger food. You know what? What do you think? I like it. The mashed potatoes are a nice touch. Thank you so much, You're Michael, welcome. for showing us this stuff. <laughs> Get these recipes by going to wendyshow.com and be sure to pick up a copy of Michael's latest book. It's called Carnivore. It's in stores now. <laughs> up next, it's time for Ask Wendy. Keep it here. attending a taping even more big fun if you're ever in the new york city area and you want free tickets go to wendyshow.com see you soon <laughs> Woo! welcome back everybody it's time for ask wendy how you doing how you doing wendy my name's huey hi um, you huey yeah Huey Hubert from hi, Jersey. Hi, yeah. Huey. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay, so my friend's throwing a Super Bowl party in Jersey at his apartment. Mm -hmm. He wants the females to bring food and the males to bring alcohol. Okay. But then on top of that, he wants us to bring $10 for admission. Oh, really? And I'm sorry, but last time I checked, that game was free. Okay. <laughs> so my question is, should I go or, you know, should I just like, no. Nah. Do you really want to see these friends? That, yes. This is, is this going to be like the party? Well, girl, money's tight, so... Money is tight. Well, no, I wasn't going to tell you to pay the admission. Okay. <laughs> here's, here's what I was going to tell you, because yeah. that's a whole lot of nerve mm -hmm. uh, that, he, that you wanna, he wants you to bring liquor and a $10 admission. Yeah, so so this, this is what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. I would suggest buy a little spirit or something mm -hmm. and go over. Act like you don't have change for a 50. <laughs> but look... Like you're diligently looking around at the party and eventually, mm -hmm. you know, you'll forget all about it or just don't go to the party. Okay. Why don't you have the party at your house? Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a lot of nerve. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing 
doing fine, How thank you. Doing? How you doing? <laughs> uh, my name is Samantha, and I've been with my boyfriend for eight months. He recently got a job in Manhattan and is looking to move to the city. My grandma lives in Brooklyn, and she's looking for a roommate, and she oh. suggested to him that he can move in with her. Do you think that's a good idea? No. <laughs> Because, because your relationship is brand new, and what if you break up with him, then your boyfriend is your grandma's roommate. <laughs> which could be the title of my next book. <laughs> no, that's not a good idea. All right, good luck. Everybody up next, it's time for our end zone dance contest, and believe me, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> Closed captioning for the Wendy Williams Show is brought to you by... fun here today you know last year we had a lot of fun with our with our uh, Wendy end zone dance off contest so this is the second time we're gonna do it this is the second annual Wendy end zone dance off contest My, um, here's how it works we have three audience members they're gonna compete to find out who does the best touchdown dance let's meet our contestants she's a sassy manager of an arts training program in St. Augustine Florida say hello to Anna Next, he is a 29-year-old maintenance man whose dance icon is Michael Jackson. Give it up for Arlie. Yeah. Hi, Arlie. Yeah. And finally, she's a 25-year-old manager of a sporting goods company in Hoboken, New Jersey. Yeah. Say hello to Jesse. Yeah. How you doing? Okay, Mr. Announcer, tell them what they're playing for. A brand new TV. You'll be watching. The Super Bowl on a top of the line Sony 60 inch HD TV from JR Music World. And that's not all. You'll be grilling up your game day grub on a Vision Grills Kamado. This grill's new design and features turn the everyday griller into an expert chef. Plus, our friends at Omaha Steaks are sending you a gourmet package including four filet mignons, four boneless strips, 16 gourmet burgers, and three pounds of tenderloin tips. dance for your lives let's get started all right Anna you're up first so Jesse and Arlie you guys come over here Anna stand on the end and Wendy and uh, that's your position when I say touchdown you begin dancing your end zone dance okay are all you right. ready I'm ready Wendy we got the music ready touchdown <laughs> Anna, <laughs> Arlie, you're next. Stand on the end. That's your dancing position. When I say touchdown, hit it. Music, ready? Touchdown! <laughs> is Jesse. Jesse, take your position. When I say touchdown, hit it, okay? Music ready and touchdown! Time to vote for your winner. Uh, yes, everybody, you know, just stand on the dance floor. <laughs> All right, uh, me too. Oh. 
<laughs> you all mesmerize me. <laughs> Audience, I'm going to put my hand over the heads like the Apollo, and then you guys scream who you want to win. So first, we're going to start with Anna. Okay. Now, Arlie. The winner by an overwhelming amount of applause for the Wendy End Zone Dance Off is Arlie. Oh my God! How does it feel to be a winner? Oh, I feel so blessed to be here. Oh, thank you. Well, you got a TV, you got a grill, you got your package from Omaha. I almost got a heart attack because I forgot about the confetti. <laughs> Our runners up, girls, you are not going home empty handed either. You guys are all both going home with the speaker system from iHome. Congratulations oh, to all. You. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating. And everybody, enjoy your Super Bowl goodies. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back.